two amazing robot stories for you in this last video. The next time we fly, we fly on Mars. NASA helicopter completes test flights in simulated Martian conditions ahead of its mission to the Red Planet in 2021. This is one of the coolest things I have ever heard. Politics, politics is annoying. I don't know if it's, is that plural or so, I don't know, whatever. The point is sometimes cultural issues and social commentary, it's like, oh man, you know what? This is why I've been trying to do a lot more science and tech videos as often as possible. It's not only something, not always something interesting, but I think it's really important for all of us. When we hear all these stories about crazy things happening on the ground, we remember what we're fighting for. Why do we fight for freedom and, 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 and liberal values, free expression, free speech? For progress, real progress, not regress. We want to build helicopters for Mars. We want to colonize other planets. We want to expand and explore and experience. And we want to allow other people to live as they choose so that we can live as we choose. In my opinion, one of the reasons I fight so heavily for free expression is because Star Trek, being one of the biggest influences on me growing up, showed us a future where we were all kind of, you know, chill, stoic, pragmatic, kind of just, you know, not overly emotional and trying to really figure out how to solve these problems. I see these, these situations of a helicopter for Mars as something that I think we're fighting for. We have to respect our ability to expand and grow and for the economy to function so we can get to this future because this is what makes it possible. Let's read the story about Martian helicopters and the next story about a giant ostrich thing from, <laughs> from Boston Dynamics, which will have serious political implications, but is still pretty, pretty badass. A helicopter that is set to fly on Mars in 2021 has completed its first test flight, NASA has revealed. The four-pound device will be carried in the belly of the Mars 2020 rover, but will fly into the skies above the red planet for the first time. The space agency hope that the drone-like helicopter will give scientists new insights into what the Martian surface is like from above. It took two brief test flights in a jet propulsion laboratory in California, which they said were the first and last time the craft will take flight until it reaches Mars. Scientists described flying the device remotely from hundreds of millions of miles away as an incredibly difficult technical feat. Hell yes! Mars has a third less gravity and 99% less air than Earth, so the team suggests that it's like flying it, flying it at 100,000 feet even though it initially will only go about nine feet into the air. Let me tell you a story real quick. It was, I think, 2011 or 2012. I think it was 2012 when one of the rovers was going to break. It was going to land on Mars. And I remember how excited everybody was. It was one of the biggest live streams ever. Everybody was watching. And then we saw that moment because it's like a 20 minute delay before we finally figure out what really happened because the data transmission, the rover landed successfully and everyone at the JPL labs was jumping up and screaming and celebrating. And there were a bunch of regular old Americans celebrating this amazing feat. And it makes me sad because I think back to the moon landing and how America was united watching this incredible endeavor to go to the moon so long ago. It's, it's inspiring. And I think these kinds of things can help bring us together. It's unfortunate, however, that there are many regressive individuals who say things like, why are we wasting money on space flight when we should be buying food? It's like, no, 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 no. This is what we're fighting for. To ex Listen, so much, of the so much of the technology that made our lives better came from this kind of research. So yes, when I'm, when I'm hearing a story about a gyrocopter going to Mars, I am excited. Let's read a little bit more. And then, uh-oh, uh I think Daily Wire crashed again. Daily, uh, I'm sorry, Daily Mail. No, Daily Wire is good. Daily, <coughs> excuse me, Daily Mail has a habit of crashing. Okay. Jump cut because I relaunched, but we got a little graphic here showing us what's going on with the Mars helicopter. I think that's actually a gyrocopter. I could be wrong, but I thought the, the dual prop counterclockwise thing. So apparently, what is this? It's, a, it's stowed on the underside of the Mars 2020 rover, and it can uh, fly for up to 90 seconds, reaching 10 to 15 feet. Doesn't sound too impressive, but think about it. We're sending a little miniature helicopter to Mars, and we're going to fly it around. I am so excited for this kind of stuff. The lab in Pasadena replicated as closely as possible Mars's thin atmosphere and freezing temperatures, which reach as low as minus, 90, minus 130 Fahrenheit at night. The vacuum chamber swaps nitrogen, oxygen, and other gases for carbon dioxide to mimic the atmosphere of the red planet, as well as a gravity offload system. They accomplished this with a motorized lanyard attached to the top of the helicopter to provide an uninterrupted tug equivalent to two-thirds of Earth's gravity. 
Getting our helicopter into an extremely thin atmosphere is only part of the challenge, said Teddy Xanatos, test conductor for the Mars helicopter. The truly, to truly simulate flying on Mars, we have to take away two-thirds of Earth's gravity because Mars' gravity is much weaker. Oh, and check it out. We can, I don't know if you can really see that, but you can see it flying. So cool, the Mars helicopter. Here's what I want to do. I want people to go to Mars, set up a base. How cool would it be? Think about this. Man, fingers crossed. I don't know how long it would take, but imagine you saved up a couple months salary because you want to go on vacation and you choose Mars. Wouldn't that be the coolest thing ever? I think so. The craft will operate mostly autonomously since the half hour round trip for commands would be far too long for an Earth-based pilot to operate it. It operates on solar cells and batteries and has small landing feet and will perform flights of increasing distance from the rover over a 30-day period. According to NASA, it will go about three meters in the air initially and then hopefully get hundreds of meters away from its partner. Whoa, see, wow. Previously, exploration on other planets has long been restricted to rovers on the surface. One thing, and I'm sure they've thought about this, is going to be the dust. Because my understanding is it's, you know, Mars is going to be really dusty. And that can be bad for these kind of machines with, you know, electric motors. A few months after the Mars 2020 rover landed in, uh, has landed in February 2021, the helicopter will detach and do test flights of up to 90 seconds. Cool stuff. All right. Well, Daily Mail keeps crashing, and I think we should pop over to our Boston Dynamics story and cover the next big issue. While it's always fun to think about space travel, let's talk about what's happening here on our nice little beautiful, uh, beautiful blue and green rock. Boston Dynamics reinvents one of its robots into an ostrich-like warehouse machine capable of loading pallets with boxes weighing up to 30 pounds. So you can see the video in the... I don't know if you can see the video, but there's a video, and I guess the back of it is a counterweight to allow it to move forward and backward and turn even. No, maybe that's the wheels. But it's got this weird little, like, suction cup thing. Let's read it. <laughs> Boston Dynamics, the firm that introduced the world to human-like robots going for a job and black mirror-style mirror demon dogs has revealed its latest creation. The machine is called Handle, and striking footage shows the automaton, the automaton balancing on two wheels while lifting boxes and loading a pallet. Okay, so yeah, the back is so that when it lifts things, it can balance on the two wheels better, I'm assuming. It whizzes around a large warehouse with impressive agility and uses an overhead sucker to lift and move its loads. That sounded dirty. Handle was first introduced in 2017, but this version has undergone significant changes. The robot is larger and carries less weight, a maximum load of 30 pounds, compared to its predecessor, which could carry boxes weighing up to 100 pounds. Boston Dynamics also opted to replace the two arms of the original design with an overhead sucker. Boston Dynamics said, Handle autonomously performs mixed SKU pallet building and depalletizing after initialization and localizing against the pallets. You speak English. The onboard vision system on handle tracks the marked pallets for navigation and finds individual boxes for grasping and replacing. That is amazing. This is bad news for people who work in warehouses, though, because you're going to be replaced by a bunch of these weird little bird-like robot things. So, uh, check this out. Little robot dog. I don't know what we're going to do with the little robot dogs, but they're pretty freaky. Oh, check it out. Cool navigation map. Handle has been largely overshadowed by other machines manufactured by the company, Atlas and Spot Spot Mini, Hit headlines around the world when the company unveiled their startling capabilities. Videos emerged of its, ter of, the of its terrifying Atlas robot running and jumping over obstacles with ease in 2018. In one, Atlas, a humanoid robot, can be seen jogging around a grassy field before leaping over a log that's obstructing its path. In the second, Spot Mini RoboDog navigates its way around an office building, climbing and ascending a set of stairs with ease, all under its own direction. The Canaan automatons look eerily similar to those featured in an episode of the sci-fi series where mechanized creatures hunt humans in a post-apocalyptic future, but I'm pretty sure that was based on what Boston Dynamics is doing. Boston Dynamics, based in Waltham, Massachusetts, manually steered Spot Mini around its test course to prepare for the demonstration. So I think this is the original handle from 2017, and you can see they gave it arms first. I guess the suction makes more sense because it requires less motor function, like, um, like you know, arms. It just can just go. Uh, so that's about that, that about does it, I guess. We wrapped up on uh, some interesting. Oh, check this out. This is really cool. These are like QR codes. The bottom, presumably, it tracks the pallets by the QR code. Man, the future is going to be crazy. I will end by saying one more thing, as I so often do. Automation is going to displace a lot of jobs. 
and it's coming faster and faster. Technology does this. I think, I don't, you know, I've never been a big proponent of universal basic income. Uh, I, I even talked about it on Joe Rogan. Because I think what happens is people find other things of value to take from other people. But I will recognize we do have a crisis with unemployment here. Seriously. Young men aren't working. No jobs. So it's not that there's not going to be new jobs being created, but maybe there's not enough new jobs. I don't know. I'll leave it there. I will see you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thanks for hanging out.